Scam graphics cards are everywhere, and not that hard to find. Spend any time on any online storefront, and you can find a graphics card that's way too cheap to be real. This isn't just Wish either. Within three minutes, I was able to find these cards on Amazon, eBay, and any other online store I searched through. So, as someone who has bought and tested these cards, it's time to take a look at how these fakes are made, and why they won't go away anytime soon. In this video, I'll break it down into three different portions. First, being the selection of these components. Next, the preparation and modification of these parts. Then finally, the financial feasibility and why these cards and scams are still profitable. For the sake of this video, we will focus on the well-executed scam cards. While you can simply be ripped off and not get what you paid for, for this video, we will focus on the cards that fool the average person into thinking that they are real. So how is a GPU selected? Well, there are quite a few factors to take a look at. First, the GPU itself needs to be cheap, but also new enough to have some compatibility for current games. This is why most of the scam cards you can buy online fall somewhere in the GeForce 400 to 700 series cards. Anything higher and it gets too expensive, anything lower and the card may not support the latest DirectX revisions and software revisions, and therefore easily detectable when it won't play the latest games. The next thing to consider is the difficulty locating large amounts of these cards. The 550 Ti's are almost everywhere and are getting thrown out left and right because they are really outdated with their low 1GB of VRAM. This is also why the last three or so of these cards that I've purchased have ended up being 550 Ti's. There's also another thing to consider when these graphics cards are getting selected, and that's whether or not they will be compatible with all the different types of systems these people will be buying and using them for. Now, obviously, these are scam cards. They're not designed to play the best, but the scam does get easily detected and doesn't right, have the right audience if you just go through and the card doesn't work because of actual problems. Like, yeah, if you put a really expensive, or rather, usually the larger cards, at least like the 980s and stuff and the 970s, they are rather expensive even today, as well as being requiring a lot of power connectors and things like that. So those aren't really selected just because of the fact that those are, I guess, really power hungry and most power supplies, at least for these systems that people are buying, a 1050 Ti doesn't really usually have a power connector. So why would a scam one need like three? Most important modifications start at the software level. There are two software methods to fool your computer into thinking you got what you paid for. Both include a combination of driver and BIOS modification. The first method is to simply modify a standard 1050 Ti driver release just enough to display the screen and not look distorted. This is a problem prone method, however, as if the person opens up any game, there's going to be a good chance this game will crash. Next is to modify a standard driver for the actual GPU into appearing as the desired card. This is a little more complicated and even gets more difficult if you want to modify the BIOS to display the proper amounts of VRAM. This would involve a lot of snooping through the code and of drivers and BIOS alike to find just the right values to change. Then, if they're really dedicated, checking for stability and hoping they're just display values and not really anything important. The final result, though, is a card that plays normally and is less likely to crash. This is ideal for going undetected for the longest period of time and letting that consumer return period run out. The best way to catch this, however, is to compare frame rates from your card to a known example. If you get 10 FPS in Minecraft, but your buddy gets a couple thousand, either you coupled yourself a Pentium with a 2080 Ti, or you may have just gotten scammed. 
Oh yeah, and you probably want to know why I'm not showing you all the details about how you would replicate this. And that's because NVIDIA or AMD or someone from those companies are probably watching this video and going, are you really, really going to say how to put all that information on the internet and let the scam graphics cards run wild? And you'll see at the end of this video a little bit more in depth about that. But no, I'm actually making this video to help educate people on how to kind of more detect these scams by also telling you how they're made. But for the most part, I'm, this is not a tutorial on how to make a scam graphics card. I'm making a fake 2080 Ti also in an educational sense, leaving out key important details. So that way someone can't replicate this, but it's more of a helpful guide to figure out how to detect and how to point out some of the scam graphics cards as they're made. So yes, I, I would like to share you with you all the information about how to modify the BIOS and all that stuff. But to be honest with you, I think this problem is already big as it is, and I don't need to add to it. So, that being said, there are lots of people that just feel that that's okay to put that information out there, and that's just one of the things that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to contribute to the problem. Uh, I'm not going to call anybody out either. It's just not me. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm not including everything. Next is some of the physical modifications that need to be made to these cards. The GPU has an ID code that names the exact make and model of the GPU. This is usually engraved under the surface of the die to make it easier to tell what the GPU is. In cases where scammers know what they are doing, however, they sand down this identifier to make it more difficult to easily detect the scam. Take note that this is different than lapping a CPU as the sole purpose of this is to remove the identifier, not to decrease temps. If you find a GPU that does not have a heat spreader, that silicon dye has been sanded down, I would highly proceed with caution. Finally, in physical modifications, the heatsink is one of the most easiest identifiers of these scam GPUs. As for the shrouds, it's a simple plastic shroud that is almost directly copied from all the others. These usually look the same and they may have a slight paint difference, and also, some cards I have purchased have chosen to use other shrouds in attempts to be less identifiable, but these cards typically have the same characteristics of a cheap aluminum heatsink. And these aluminum heatsinks are just little blocks that have been carved out and never have any heat pipes. These are also really cheap to manufacture and are a definite sign, or almost definite sign, of a scam graphics card. So, how is this profitable? How is this worth the time investment of creating, then advertising these cards? Well, the cost of getting a used 550Ti in bulk equates to about $30 to $50 depending on the card and the seller. So someone must be brought in to modify the BIOS and drivers for that card. And the cost could range depending on the complexity required in modifying the GPU and drivers. Though, there are a few websites with free downloads of modified BIOS software and drivers. I wouldn't be surprised though if these were passed around a few times. And just like STDs, you don't know what you're getting yourself into after you get going. Next is the advertising costs and the opportunity cost of adding all these cards to the online stores. Since we're talking about a scam operation here, these stores can get taken down pretty quickly depending on the traffic. Some sites, like Wish, don't seem to care at all about the graphics cards, and if they're scams, they've left them up and they have a lot of purchases. I assume it's not that difficult to make a new store for each one that gets taken down, but it does take time. Additionally, shipping will take a chunk out as well, since from what I have seen in my purchases in the past of these cards, they primarily come from China. This adds up and can cost about $10 to ship, a ship the card in a bag in relatively slow shipping. That leaves about $40 in total costs assuming the seller didn't have to modify the card themselves. Now, going back to that $10 though, I've had a lot of cards that have showed up in these plastic bags that are almost broken. And when someone just gets a card and it doesn't work because it's been shipped poorly, they're immediately going to return it and that doesn't end up having the highest profit return. So depending on the shipping and where they want to cheap out is how much money they actually have to pay. So that leaves the total cost minus about $40 for each card. So 
for what I've seen in the past from my card purchases is that these cards usually cost anywhere from 30 to like $75. And so when it costs roughly about $40 to make them, that leaves depending on the high end models, the $75, they can get anywhere from like $35 off of that, which is a relatively decent profit margin compared to the price, of course. So, and then if we include advertising of these fake sketchy online stores, it could drive up the price even more. So how did these guys make money? Well, there's a couple different hunches that I have, and these are hunches and I'll explain my sources and reasoning and all the information that I pulled to make these. So I've done a lot of looking online and I was hoping I would find a seller that sells a bunch of these cards that probably is the source. I was looking for whoever manufactured them because there are a lot of cards going around from a lot of different sellers. And my hunch is simply that these people are probably drop shipping it or buying it from a certain seller. So that would be my assumption. These people, if you're buying it from the same seller and they all get the same identical cards, I would assume at least with some minor paint differences that the, there's some way to buy these sh shrouds in bulk, the fan coolers in bulk, the heat sinks in bulk, something like that. And I wasn't able to do so, which I had, you know, I put in VPNs over there trying to get a rough idea, rough idea, get in the area and the stuff, see if that would pop up any differences. No, I spent a good search and I was surprised. So my hunch is that there's some type of seller that has made a bunch of these and they're just liquidating them all. And since these are all pretty much relatively the same, while well, some minor differences in coolers and some minor differences in the actual car that's underneath the hood, it's still looking like someone made a bunch of these and probably sold them as bulk for really cheap. And most people that you actually see that you can buy these cards from, whether or not they be like the fake stores or, you know, the sketchy stores on Wish, they are probably likely just drop sellers, or drop shippers, sorry drop shippers and they probably just take the stuff from the known site that they get it and just ship it off to you and don't handle any of the actual physical processes of modifying the code of changing values picking out the cards even designing the, the shroud which is probably copied from somewhere not not any not any connotation for you know china or anything copying stuff just the fact that it's this pattern of people cutting out a little bit more uh, at least with these scam graphics cards wouldn't be surprising if that was something that was also happened with the shroud itself so that being said these people probably at least the regular basic stores probably don't make a good bit of money per card they probably don't even know that they're selling a fake card i would be willing to bet that half of these may not even know that they're buying a fake card they may just say "Ooh, this is a 20 dollars 1050 ti i can mark this up to 40 dollars and sell it as a good deal and they may not even know that they're doing that so that's what the financial feasibility is. Some people may not actually have to worry about the problems. Now, obviously, when the store gets taken down and repeatedly put back up, I would say they probably know what they're doing by then. So, why did I not show you all the details in this video? Well, that's just because this is already a big problem. And honestly, I've gotten so many comments recently about people going, well, why are you buying a fake graphics card? Why are you giving the scammers money? Why are you doing all this stuff? And there's actually a, kind of a scale away with that. You have one end of the spectrum where you have these people that are actually buying these cards, whether these cards be malicious and damage your computer, which has happened to me. People are buying these cards and they are putting them in their computer and they are getting scammed. There's tens and tens of hundreds, probably hundreds of people, at least on Wish, hundreds and hundreds of people that have at least bought in these cards. And I don't know why I said bought, just bought, and just bought. But these people have paid money for these cards and they are going to get scammed if someone doesn't tell them. And I would like to think that me or some other YouTuber or some other person makes these videos about, hey, don't buy this crap. That should be something that is important. And I think me spending $40 and refunding the value afterwards is extremely better than someone actually buying these cards and getting scammed. And that's the other thing, too. You don't get solved this problem by just, you know, buying the cards and telling people you got to report this stuff. And obviously, they'll just make another store when theirs gets taken down. But if we don't all, and I'm somewhat guilty of this, if we don't all start t taking the stuff down, or at least reporting it, then we're kind of just in the same boat. I mean, you know, I bought stuff and I didn't necessarily report it when I found out it was a scam. And I just kind of let them have the money. And that's not necessarily the best thing that I should be doing as well when I make these videos. So, that being said, I think that wraps up this video. This video has taken almost two weeks to make. I hope you liked it. And uh, 
Thank you guys very much for watching. Give it a like if you do. Have a good day.